Android. It's the most popular operating system in the world. It runs on more devices than any other OS. It's got 3 billion users and accounts for 70% of all smartphone operating systems. That means that you want to make Android apps. And sooner or later, you're going to need to write an Android app that lets users log in and log out, or features authentication, as we like to put it. Now, let me tell you, don't roll your own authentication. It only looks simple, and it's one of those features that ends up turning into its own project or several projects. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that with Auth0 and a few lines of Kotlin code, you can add authentication to an Android app. And we're going to have some fun along the way. So fire up Android Studio and let's get started. I find it so much nicer when I know what I'm going to build before I start a tutorial. So let me take you on a grand tour of what our app does. What you're looking at is the Android emulator and it's pretending to be a Google Pixel 3a. That's a phone from about 2019 and it is running Android API 30, also known as Android 11. So from a couple of years ago, the purpose of this exercise is about adding authentication to an Android app. So I pared down the scope of the app as much as possible. It's a single screen with two modes, logged in and logged out, and that's it. So on the emulator, what I've got is the logged out screen that you see when you first fire up the app. It just simply says, welcome to the app, and you've got a log in and log out button with the log out button disabled and the login button enabled and ready waiting for a button press. So I'm going to press on it in the emulator and what will appear shortly is a dedicated browser window, a web view that displays Auth Zero's universal login page. It's called universal login because it looks the same no matter what platform it's on, whether it's on a mobile device, Android or iOS, or a web page or a desktop application. It renders inside a dedicated web browser or web view so that it does look the same across all platforms. Now, it gives you all the features that you would expect from a login page including, you know, the um, nice username and password text fields, the forgot password link, the sign up for an account link. And if you decide to continue, you can also add all kinds of extra goodies like social login and biometrics and uh, multi-factor authentication. It's all supported there and it's all built around universal login. Now, before you get worried and go, wait, wait, I want it to look like my thing. Don't worry, the Auth0 dashboard lets you customize universal login so that it has your organization's or app's color scheme and look and feel. You can make it look like you. If I hit the back button right now, I get taken back to my app and I see a little snack bar at the bottom that says, hey, you've got to log in to use the app. So, all right, better log in. So I'm gonna press the login button again get taken back to universal login and I'm going to log in using a pre-created user, rando at example.com, my favorite example user. Then I'm going to type in my extremely secure password and log in. This takes me to the logged in screen, which is very simple. All it does is it says, welcome to the app. The login button is still there, but now it's disabled. The logout button is now enabled, and we see three pieces of information. The user's name, the user's email address, and the user's photo. Being the observant developers I know you are, you've probably noticed that the name and email are the same. These are the default values when creating a new user. The name gets set to the same thing as email, and the user's image is the default image. It's just generated from the user's initials. Login has its not at all evil twin logout. So let's take that for a spin. Going back to the emulator, I'm going to click on the logout button, which takes me back to the initial screen. But this time 
the title is changed to you're logged out. The log in button is re-enabled and the log out button is disabled. And that's the app. Rather than make you start from scratch, we've created a starter project that you can download. You can find it at the link in the down below section, the description, and uh, go grab it. Once you've downloaded the starter project, load it up in Android Studio and take it for a test run. I'm going to click Android Studio's run button right now, which should fire up the emulator and show me the app's single screen in logged out mode, which means you see the title, you see welcome to the app and the login button enabled and the log out button disabled. Pressing on the buttons right now does nothing, but that's to be expected. The first step in this exercise is to register the app inside Auth0. In order to do this, one of the first things we need to do is get the app's package name, which is contained inside the Android manifest file. This file is called Android manifest.xml. It's inside the manifests folder, which is inside the app folder in the Android Studio project pane. So I'm going to click on it right now to get a look at the file. And it is in this tag, the manifest tag and it is the in the package attribute here. In this case, for the starter app, it is com.auth0.androidlogin. Copy this value and put it someplace safe. We're going to use it in just a moment. All right, it's time to register the app in the Auth0 dashboard. This is a three-step process. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is add the app to the Auth0 dashboard's list of registered applications. Then we're going to gather two pieces of information. And this is information that the app needs in order to be able to delegate login and log out to the Auth0 service. And then finally, we need to provide Auth0 with the necessary callback URL so that it can communicate with your app. It's time to log into the Auth0 dashboard. And in order to be able to do that, you need an Auth0 account. You can sign up for one down below. The link is in the description. And yes, there is a free tier. In fact, uh, the account that we're going to be using in this demo is a free account, and it's an actually useful free account. It supports up to 10 apps and 7,000 users with unlimited logins. That is more than enough for you to evaluate the system, do a lot of experimenting, and even run a small business. So yeah, don't wait. Sign up for an account now. I'll wait and then you can log in. All right, now that you've created an Auth0 account, or if you already have an Auth0 account, log into it right now. This will take you to the dashboard for your Auth0 tenant. Now, an Auth0 tenant, loosely speaking, is a set of applications, users, connections, and other information that you can manage using your Auth0 account. Now, when you log into the dashboard, the first thing you're going to see is the Getting Started page. It's worth checking it out in a little more detail to find out what's available to you on your Auth0 dashboard, but we're not interested in that right now. What we really want to do is we want to get started setting up an Auth0 application within the dashboard. In other words, we want to be able to connect your Android app to Auth0, and we're going to do that right now. So what you should do is find the Applications item in the left-hand menu of your dashboard and click on that. That's going to pop up a submenu, and from that, select Applications again. This will take you to the list of applications that is under your account. Now, in a brand new account, there's only going to be one application in that list. That's a default app that's auto-generated when your account is created. We could use it, but we won't. What we want to do instead is we want to start creating a new application, one specifically for our Android app. The way we do that is by creating a new application. You do that by clicking the Create Application button, and it will ask for some details. What we need to do in this window is just provide a name and specify what type of application it is. In this case, I'm going to give it the name Android Login. 
and it is a native app so I'm going to select native under choose an application type and then I'm going to click create. Auth0 will take a moment or two to create your application but once it's done you'll be taken to the application's quick start page. The quick start page provides a menu of starter applications for all sorts of operating systems and application frameworks including Android, iOS, desktop and various frameworks like React Native and Ionic and Flutter and so on. Now, you'll also see that there are a couple of Android Quick Start projects that you can download, but you've already downloaded a starter project, so you don't need to do that. We can simply jump to the settings page to configure Auth0 and the starter project so that they can talk with each other. The way to do that is to click on the settings tab. On the settings page, we're going to do two very important things. One, get information that the app needs to know about Auth0. And two, provide information that Auth0 needs to know about the app. There are two pieces of information that we need to work with first, the domain and the client ID. Now, both of these are unique identifiers that help Auth0 and your application talk to each other. The domain, which I'm highlighting on the screen right now, is the unique identifier for your Auth0 tenant. It's how your app reaches Auth0. You're gonna highlight the client ID now. It also is a unique identifier, but this is the unique identifier for your application. It's how Auth0 distinguishes one application from all the others. Auth0's Android library expects to find the Auth0's tenant domain and your app's client ID stored string resources inside your Android project. Now, to keep things simple, the starter project already has a string resource project called Auth0.xml. In your project, you'll find it in the resources folder. Let me switch to Android Studio. Under res, the resources folder, under values. There it is, auth0.xml. I'm going to double click it so you can see its contents. You can see that uh, there's just a handful of XML tags in there whose values are placeholders with instructions telling you what to replace those values with. So uh, the first one is the domain value. I'm going to go back to the auth0 dashboard and copy the domain value. Luckily, there is a handy little copy button right there, so I'm going to click that. Then I'm going to switch back to Android Studio and paste that domain value into the place where the XML file tells me to paste it, which is inside the com underscore auth zero underscore domain tag. So I will paste it right there. That's my domain. I need to go back to the auth zero dashboard and get the other key piece of information, client ID. Once again, the client ID field, like the domain field, has a handy copy button. I'm going to click that, go back to Android Studio, and paste it into the appropriate tag, which is com underscore auth zero underscore client underscore ID. A lot of underscores there. Anyways, let me paste that value in. And there we have it. That is most of auth0.xml filled out. You've probably noticed that there's still one placeholder value left in auth0.xml, and that is the one with the uh, tag name com underscore auth0 underscore scheme. Now, what you should do is simply take the placeholder value and replace it with a nice short string called app. And in a moment, when we cover the callback and logout URLs, I'll explain what the scheme is for. So right now, just set com underscore auth zero underscore scheme to app. You've given the Android app the domain and client ID, and that's what it needs to communicate with auth zero. What we need to do now is give auth zero the information it needs to communicate with the app, and it communicates with the app using two URLs, a callback URL, which it uses to communicate with the app to signal that a user has successfully logged in, and a logout URL, which you've probably already guessed is what Auth0 uses to signal to the app that a user has logged out. 
Now, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, this is an Android app. It uses activities which you navigate to using intents, not URLs and things like that. Well, you're absolutely right. And in the case of Android native applications, the callback and logout URLs are translated into intents to, to inform the app that yes, the user is either logged in or logged out. So what we're going to do in the next step is set up these URLs. The callback and logout URLs are the same string and they follow the format that I'll show you right now. You can see it on my screen here. You can see placeholder values contained within curly brackets. So the first thing to do is replace the scheme placeholder. And if we were working with a web app, the scheme would be something like HTTPS, maybe HTTP if we weren't feeling uh, security conscious. But anyways, in this case, since this is an Android app, it doesn't have to be HTTPS. And in fact, it can be anything. I prefer to use app as the scheme just to make it very, very clear that we're dealing with an app and we are not talking to a web application. And that's why in the previous step, you set the com underscore auth zero underscore scheme value to app. We're matching it here. The next thing is the your domain placeholder and we are going to replace it with the domain of our tenant. So I will copy it from the dashboard and paste it over the your underscore domain placeholder, like so. And then finally, there is the app package name. In case you've forgotten, you can find the app package name in Android Studio under Android Manifest dot XML. And if you've been following along or if you're using the starter app, it is com dot auth zero dot Android login. So I will take that and replace the placeholder with that value com auth zero Android login. So this is the callback URL. It also happens to be the logout URL. So we will take this value, go back to uh, the uh, Android, uh, Android dashboard and scroll down to the application URI section of our dashboard and paste it into two particular text fields, allowed callback URLs and allowed logout URLs. This completes all the setup we have to do on the Auth0 side. The last thing we need to do is just scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the ever important save changes button. And with that, you should see a notification that your changes have been successfully saved and we are good on the Auth0 side. It's now time to work on the app. Hey, remember those values for the domain and URL scheme that we defined a little while back in the Auth0.xml file? Well, we need to let the project know about them by defining a couple of manifest placeholders for them in the app's build.gradle file. And yes, I remember in an Android project, there are two build.gradle files. The build.gradle file I'm talking about is the one for the app. So I have it open on my screen right now, and we are going to add the manifest placeholders to the default config section. I typically like to add it here after this first block with application ID, min, SDK, etc., and before the test instrumentation runner part. So I'm going to paste the line in here. Let me expand my screen so you can see the whole thing. Here we go. So manifest placeholders just defines a couple of key value pairs, basically telling the application, yeah, what auth0 domain is, where it can find it, and where, uh, where it can find the auth0 scheme. Note that uh, this is basically telling the project that uh, the Auth0 tenant's domain and its, uh, and, and its URL scheme can be found stored in specific tags inside the app's string resource file. So remember, we defined that earlier. In order to use Auth0, you'll need to install two libraries. The first one is Auth0.android. It's a collection of libraries that enables Android apps to use Auth0's APIs including the authentication API, which is the thing that lets you log in and log out users. 
The other thing we're going to need is a library called jwtdecode.android. And uh, the app is going to use it to decode the user's identity information, which is encoded in a JWT or a JSON web token. Now, we add these libraries into the build Gradle file, which we're still at, and it's inside the dependencies section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to add a couple of blank spaces here. I'm just going to separate out where I'm adding the auth zero specific libraries, and I'm going to paste them right here to the end of the dependencies section, like so. So this is the uh, dependency for auth zero dot Android. And here is the dependency for jwtdecode.android. Now at this point, anytime you make a change to a Gradle file, Android Studio is going to tell you, hey, Gradle files have changed since last Project Sync. A Project Sync may be necessary, yada, yada, yada. Follow Android Studio suggestion, click Sync Now. One more change and then we can actually start coding. And that is we need to enable the app to access the internet because of course the app needs to communicate with Auth0 over the internet to enable login and logout. And we enable internet access in the manifest file. So I'm going to open Android manifest.xml. And just after the opening manifest tag, I'm going to paste in this tag, the user's permission tag, where we specify that yes, this application does have permission to access the internet. It's time to get coding after all that set up. So let's do it. Let's implement login. Now, in order to do that, we need to open the main activity file, which I have open on my screen right now. Now, log in and eventually log out both rely on functionality from the auth0.android library. So we need to import that. So I'm going to expand the import section and I'm going to paste in the necessary import files to support what we're going to do. There we go. You can see right now they're grayed out. They will lighten up as we start using them. If you look at the code for the main activity class, you can see that I've left some to do statements here uh, for some properties for the main activity class. Uh, they are properties for the app and user status and for the auth zero data. Let's start with app and user status. So I'm going to remove this to do comment and I'm going to add a couple of properties. The first one will be private late init and it'll be a variable called account and it'll be a uh, variable of type auth zero object. The next one we're going to have is another private variable called app just launched. And it's going to be a Boolean that whose initial value will be true. And then finally, one more private variable called user is authenticated. And that will initially be false. So these properties that you just added, account is an object containing account information uh, about the app, the app's client uh, ID and its tenant's domain. It's what we're going to use to connect to Auth0. App just launched is a Boolean that is true only immediately when the app is launched and false straight after that. And then finally, user authenticated is just what it sounds like. It's true when the user is logged in and false when the user is logged out. We need one more property to hold data about the user that we receive from Auth0. So I'm going to add it here in the Auth0 data section. I'm going to get rid of this to do comment and declare it once again, private variable called user. And it is an instance of the user class, which is defined here. If you look at the left side menu, you can see that there is a predefined user class. We'll look at it in just a moment, but let's get back to main activity. Uh, there it is. Now, this is an instance of the user class. Once again, it's, perp it's a data class and its purpose is to contain and decode identity information about the current user who's logged in. 
We'll use the onCreate method, which gets called whenever an activity is created, to initialize a couple of things. Uh, first, we need to initialize an account object using the app's client ID and the tenant's domain. This account object is necessary for uh, logging in and logging out, and we'll use it in the login and logout methods. The other thing, of course, we need to do is connect the login and logout buttons to their corresponding methods. So uh, let me do that right now. First of all, let's initialize uh, the account uh, property we set up earlier. So it's an instance of the Auth0 object and it needs the client ID, which we're going to get from the string resource we de uh, defined earlier, com underscore auth zero underscore client underscore ID. That's the first one. And then the second one, let's see now. Once again, we need get string r dot string dot com underscore auth zero underscore domain. So that takes care of the account property. The other thing we need to do is we need to connect uh, the login and logout buttons. And we can do that by accessing binding. And then we've got button login. And we'll set its on click listener to login. And we'll do something similar for the logout button. So binding button logout set on click listener to logout. One more thing, let's set the title text to its initial value. Welcome to the app. And we can do that right here. Once again, we'll use binding text view title and then we'll set its text property to the welcome to the app value that I have stored in a string resource. So I'll do get string r string, and it should be there it is, initial title. Later on in the app, when the user is logged in, we'll change it to you're logged in. And later again, when the user logs out, we'll update it to you're logged out. Now it's time to work on the login method, which I'm going to build a little bit at a time. Scroll login into view and uh, get rid of the to do comment. And uh, just begin. Now, everything that we're going to do is going to hinge on the web auth provider object. And what that allows us to do is interact with the Auth0 authentication part of the library. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call the login method. And the login method expects one argument, that account object that we created earlier. Uh, what we're doing is we're doing some method chaining. So as soon as we get back uh, the returned object from the login method, we then pass it to the next method, which is with scheme, where we specify the URL scheme for the domain. Remember, we define that. Uh, we define the URL scheme a little bit earlier in auth0.xml. So we're going to pull out that uh, particular scheme right now. We're going to get it straight out of the string resource. So it'll be get string r string com underscore auth zero underscore scheme. We're going to take the result of the with scheme method. And then once again, this is method chaining. We will call the start method. And this is the actual method that starts the actual login process with auth zero. And start takes two arguments. The first one is the context of the activity that we're in. So that's just simply the this value. And then it takes an object which provides two methods. Now let me just define the object type. Call back credentials, comma, and course be able to must be able to handle an authentication exception
And what this object needs to do is it needs to provide two methods, one named on failure, the other named on success. So let me just define uh, some stub versions of those methods right now, and then we'll fill them out. So that's on failure right there. And I'm going to do the same for on success. And uh, you know what? Actually, I'll leave it as this. I was going to make these to do comments, but might as well use the to do function. Let's deal with the case where on failure gets called. Now, on failure is most often called when the user cancels out of universal login. Uh, usually they're going, oh, you know what? I don't remember my username or password like that. They hit the cancel button and Auth0 returns from universal login back to the application. Um, we're going to keep it simple and we'll just simply have the app display a snack bar telling the user, you know what, you have to log in if you want to use the app. So we'll do that. So I'm going to replace the to do in on failure with a call to show snack bar. And I've already defined a string in the strings resource that will show when the user uh, cancels out of universal login. So I'm just going to call get string r string dot and it should be login underscore there it is login underscore failure underscore message and that's it that handles the on failure case it's time to implement the other method on success which is the method on the happy path it means that the user has successfully logged in and when that happens we want to do a couple of things which is one set the user is authenticated property to true and two call the update ui method to you guessed it update the ui so let me find this to do and we'll set user is authenticated to true and make a call to update ui now that we've done the login method it's time to code the log out method and just like login, I'm going to build logout a little at a time. So once again, logout, just like login, starts with web auth provider. And then we're going to chain a bunch of methods together, starting with logout. Now, logout requires an account as its argument. It's the same account object we use for login. We also have to specify the URL scheme. Once again, that we're just going to get it from the string resources, get string r dot string dot com underscore auth zero underscore scheme. So that's that. And then once again, we call the start method and the start method takes two arguments. One is the context of this activity and the other one is an object providing two callback methods so i'm going to enter not callback but callback optional void and the other uh, the other type is authentication exception and once i've done that I've got to specify two methods. First of all, the on failure method and the on success method. And there we go. That is the first step to building logout. Now, on failure is rarely called as a result of logging out. It means that something unusual has happened and handling this case is beyond the scope of this tutorial. So what we'll do for the failure case is simply show a snack bar with a uh, general failure message that I've actually defined. If I'll, let me show you here in strings.xml. Uh, let's see now. Yes, general failure with exception code. And it's a parameterized string. What we're going to do is we're also going to show the error code. So let me code that right up. Go back to main activity and let's code on failure. That's going to simply be, I'm going to call the show snack bar method. And of course, we'll get the string from the resources. It's in our string dot general 
general failure with exception code. And we'll include the exception code right here. So error get code. And that takes care of the on failure case. And now the happy path. In other words, if we're executing on success, it means that the user logged out successfully. And in that case, what we want to do is we want to set the user is authenticated property to false. And we want to call update UI again to update the UI to the logged out state. So let's do that right now. This is fairly simple. This is user is authenticated and we set its value to false and we make a call to update UI. And that is the on success case for logout. Finally, it's time to update the UI. So let's do that. We do that in the update UI method. So I'm going to remove this to do comment. And we do two things when we're updating the UI. One is that we update the title text, tell the user whether they're logged in or logged out. And the other thing we do is set the appropriate button states. So enable and disable the login and logout buttons depending on the user, whether they are authenticated or not. So let's take care of the title text first. So it'll be binding text view title text. And of course, its value is going to depend on if it's the user is authenticated or not. So We'll use this style of if, which Kotlin greatly provides for us. And then if the user is authenticated, we will set uh, title view texts of value to the logged in title. Otherwise, we'll set it to the logged out title both of which are values stored as a string resource. So logged out title. There we go. That takes care of the title text. Now for the button states. So we'll take care of the login button. And it is enabled if the user is not authenticated. which makes sense. If the user is logged out, they want to be able to log in and vice versa. So we will do that for the logged out button, log out button, button, button log out is enabled, is set to user is authenticated. And that's it for update UI. All right, moment of truth, time to run the app. So, Pull out whatever lucky charm you have, hit the run button and say the magic incantation. This should work and let's see what happens. Now, remember, uh, you're going to need to create a user in order to be able to log in. You can do that in the dashboard right here on the users page. Uh, you can get there by selecting user management and then users and then clicking create users. The process is pretty straightforward, but hey, back to the app. You can see on the emulator that we do have welcome to the app on the screen. The login button is enabled. So let's go click it. I have already created a user using the fictitious email address rando at example.com and my super secure demo password. By the way, don't try to hack me. I don't use this in real life. And finally, I will hit enter and try and log in. And there we go. We are now logged in. The title text has changed to your login. The login button is disabled and the logout button is enabled. The app has communicated with Auth0 and sent back some information specifying, yes, this user, randoatexample.com, is logged in. To log out, we simply click log out and we return back to the original screen. But this time, instead of saying welcome to the app, the title text says you're logged out. The login button is once again enabled and the logout button is disabled. So yes, not bad for a first run. Now, the app actually has been sent information about the user. 
And what we need to do is we need to extract it. We're, we, we haven't done that yet, neither are we displaying it. This next step in this tutorial is to take that user information, extract it from whatever thing Auth0 gave the app, and then display it on screen. So let's do that. Now remember, when the user successfully logs in, the onSuccess method contained within the login method gets executed. And when that happens, one of the things we get back is something called result, which is an object of type credentials. Uh, credentials are a package that Auth0 sends to your app upon successful login. And one of the key pieces of the credentials is the ID token. Uh, the ID token is basically digital proof that we've authenticated the user. That's how we know that the user is logged in and we know who they are. The other interesting thing about the ID token is that it contains information about the user encoded with it. And we can extract this information to uh, find out, you know, the user's name, email address, other contact information, that sort of thing. Let's get a look at the ID token. So I'm in the login method and I'm going to add uh, a log here. So I'm just going to tag it Android login. It'll make it easier for me to sort it out through all the stuff that ends up in logging. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at a particular property of the result object, result.id token. Ah, I need to import log, so I'm going to do that right now. And will that will run the app. I'll log in again. And as you can see, I'm logged in, but this time what I'm going to do is, let me move the emulator out of the way. I'm going to fire up Logcat and take a look at what we've got here. This got logged. It's a bunch of digital gobbledygook, but let me grab it, let me copy it, and then go over to a partic particular website called jwt.io. JWT, of course, is short for JSON Web Token, and one of the things it provides is a uh, JWT decoder. I'm going to take the information, the ID token that I just copied from Android Studio's Logcat and paste it into the encoded window and take a look at what happens. Paste and take a look at the payload here. Rando at example.com. Email rando at example.com. This is information about the user who is logged into the app. We can extract this information from the ID token and then display it on screen. So let's set about to do just that. To keep the tutorial simple, we did set up a user class whose job is to hold user information and also decode user information stored within an ID token. So I'm gonna to go to Android Studio, I'm gonna hide the Logcat window, and let's get a look at that user class. We've got the basics laid out here. There's a set of properties that mirror the properties that you can get from an ID token. The ones we're interested in are um, ID, the user's unique identifier, the user's name, email, uh, whether or not their email has been verified, the a URL for their picture, which is stored as a string, and uh, a date string called updated app, which tells us when the user's account was last updated. When you create an instance of the user class, it takes an ID token value, but does nothing with it right now. All user does upon instantiation is set all these string properties to the empty string. What we want to do is we want to take that given ID token and decode it and then use that decoded information to feed all these properties. So we'll do that with the help of a library that we imported a little bit earlier. 
When you create an instance of the user class, it takes an ID token value, but does nothing with it right now. All user does upon instantiation is set all these string properties to the empty string. What we want to do is we want to take that given ID token and decode it and then use that decoded information to feed all these properties. So we'll do that with the help of a library that we imported a little bit earlier. The user class expects an ID token when it's instantiated and we use that ID token to fill uh, these properties after we decode it. So we will do that and we'll do that in an init block. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get rid of the to do comment and this is one of those operations that might fail. So it's the perfect place for a try catch block. So let me set that up right here. And uh, let's see now for try, I'm going to make it very clear that uh, we're going to attempt to decode the ID token. And for catch, it's handle case where we failed to decode the ID token. Make it nice and clear. So to decode the ID token, I'm going to need to create a uh, value, JWT, and we are going to use the JWT object that is provided to us by the JWT library. Remember, that's one of two libraries that we imported earlier, the other one being auth0.android, the authentication library. So, JWT expects a string, and ID token is a string optional. So we need to reassure JWT that we are actually giving it uh, a proper string and not a thing that could be a string or could be null. So here's where the Elvis operator comes in. So we're just reassuring JWT that yes, you are getting an actual string. It's either uh, ID token or if it's null, empty string. At which point we need to import JWT. Can do that right now. There we go, red text is gone. And if we've made it this far in the try block, it means that we've actually successfully decoded the JWT and we can pull all this information. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cheat a little and I'm going to copy and paste the code that actually does the job, but I will walk you through it. What we're doing with this block of code right here is we are filling users properties. ID we we get directly from JWT's subject property. The other bits of user information, uh, things about the user, such as their name, email, whether their email address was verified or not, uh, the location of their picture and when their uh, account was last updated, we are getting via JWT's get claim method. Get claim gets specific claims from the ID token. And a claim, put really simply, is just a, a key value pair of information about a user. So this is what we're doing here. We're using get claim, and we are uh, converting that information from get claim to string. And if it's null, once again, we're using the El oops, we're using the Elvis operator here. I'm going to attempt to highlight it. Wow, I am not clicking right today, but anyways, the Elvis operator here to say, okay, if it's null, just set the value to the empty string. This, all this will fill the information for the user instance. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna grab it and display it to the user. Now for catch, I want to uh, do one little thing here, which is I'm gonna, this is also going to be a copy and paste. It's basically the exception for the catch. And in this case, we're handling the case where uh, the ID token, we fail to uh, decode the ID token for whatever reason. Uh, most likely it's not a value, uh, we fed it an invalid JWT 
And basically, uh, what we're going to do is we'll just say, look, so leave the user properties as empty strings. Uh, there's no code for the catch block. We're just simply leaving the user properties as empty strings. Uh, so uh, that's why I've got a comment here. Because there's no code, I just want to convey what we're doing or why we're doing it. So this completes the implementation of user. Let's put it to use back in main activity. Let's go back to main activity and make use of this fully implemented user uh, class. So I'm going to go to login first. That's going to be the first place where we want to make use of the user. And I'm going to get rid of this log line and replace it with um, this now ID token. And that will simply be result.id token. Remember, result is uh, the credentials that we get back from Auth0. And we just want the ID token property of that object. We also already have a user property, and we will use the user class to instantiate that uh, user property by feeding the user class uh, the ID token we received. That's all we have to do for a login. For logout, we're going to do pretty much the same thing, except what I'm going to do is I'm going to set user to an instance of the user class, but this time not give it an argument. What that does is that creates a user with blank property. So on logout, what we're doing is we are just simply wiping out the user information. That takes care of login and logout. Now what we need to do is take that information that we now know about the user and display it on screen. We'll do that in update UI. All right, let's update update UI. I'm just going to paste in this code because this is relatively straightforward stuff. What we're doing is we are taking the information that is now contained in main activities user property and displaying it on screen. We are updating some text fields. We are loading the image view with the user's image. And uh, I believe we're done. Let's take this app out for a spin. So I'm running the emulator right now. The window should pop up any moment. And let's log in. So once again, rando at example.com. And notice what happens this time. Uh, not only are we getting the logged in screen, but we are also getting the user's name and email address. Uh, by default, the user's name is set to their email address. When you, when you create a uh, user inside the Auth0 dashboard, that's what happens. And you also get this default, uh, default avatar, which is basically a graphic with the user's initials or what Auth0 decides are your initials. It extracts them straight from the email address. Well, guess what? We are done. You have just completed writing an Android app that uses Auth0 for login and logout. High fives all around. You've done well. Uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial.